Shalom Aleichem, everyone. Hope you are doing well. Hope you've been having a good time during these three weeks, during this one particular week, and every week as always. So I've received some questions regarding what books would I recommend to beginners and to everybody else. So I'd like to just go through some of the books that I have and maybe recommend some that I see that jump out to me on the shelf. So as you can see, this top shelf is largely Kabbalah, Hasidus. I guess you can't see very well when I'm moving the camera. <laughs> now, some of this will depend on what you're interested in studying. As you can see here in the corner, there is my Tanya, the Likutei Moran, rather the kids of Likutei Moran. Now, this particular book, Advice by Reb Nachman, it's actually uh, Reb Nachman's advice as written by uh, Reb Nossen, his Talmud Kochum, his primary student. It is a fantastic book. It is one of my favorites, and I highly, highly recommend it. It's basically, um, well, let's look at it. <laughs> let's see if we can do this one-handed. So you can see I've put a lot of notes in here. You can see it's numbered eight, nine, let's see over here, six, five, four, three must start on the next page. It is a list of sayings and pieces of advice and teachings from Rabbi Nachman Mibreslev. This one is also a good one if you're interested in Breslov Hasidus. Crossing the Narrow Bridge, a practical guide to Rabbi Nachman's teachings. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily begin, recommend this for people who are beginning in Judaism, but if you have a little bit of knowledge and are interested in the more mystical side of things, uh, this very small book, as you can see, it's very physically small, but very large in terms of content and the value that you'll get out of this. So I highly recommend this book. This is also one of my favorites, The Inner Temple by Rabbi Hoshio Stard, who's also a Breslov rabbi. Now, as I'm sure that probably many of you will be interested in, the topic of Mashiach, who, what, why, how, where, when. Don't ask me to say that five times fast, because I can't. So this is also a very good book. This gets more into the... Uh, the Kabbalistic side and the Kabbalistic teachings about Mashiach and does not cover the basics. So it's not something that I would recommend if you want a basic understanding of uh, who or what Mashiach is. However, it is written for a general audience and is still uh, very readable uh, if you have some background in Jewish thought. All right, the next one. Now, I won't be going through all of these. I just, there's a lot up here that a lot on this level that um, I really enjoy. Entering the Light, I try to do videos on this for every holiday. Uh, these are basically prayers and meditations uh, in regards to every holiday, every observance. Uh, I think there's probably some in here for Tisha B'Av, but uh, I don't know if I'll be doing that video. Now, all of these books right here, as you can see, let's get a little bit of a 3D effect there. It's not really 3D, but whatever. So all of these books, here, get a finger for each book. <laughs> all of these books are written by the Holy Rav Shalom Arish. And let's get a look at some of these. Garden of Peace. Garden of Purity. Garden of Gratitude. Thank you, Hashem, for this book. There's the title, In Forest Fields, A Unique Guide to Personal Prayer. All of these are Breslau texts by the, the Holy Rev Shalom Arush. These are absolutely wonderful, wonderful books. And if I might recommend any out of the series, it is Garden of Peace. This is obviously the, the Doodly edition. It's for men only. There is also Garden of Peace Women's Edition, which I recommend for the women. Now, these smaller books right here, they're good, although I, if you have some of these other texts that are falling over, 
<laughs> and I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to get these, but uh, they all they are also nice. Here's a little book. Uh, again, more Breslov stuff. More Breslov stuff. Uh, if you're not used to using a prayer book, this little red one, uh, if it's difficult to, for you to use a Sadur, which is the prayer book, this little red one will be very useful for getting in the habit of reading prayers, uh, pre-written prayers from a book. If you struggle with depression or feelings of hopelessness, this is also a very excellent book. This is about prayer, which again is very good. Shameless uh, Tzadikim, one of my favorite books, not because it has the, the highest, most interesting teachings, but because, let's take a look at it. It's a list of names. <laughs> and you're wondering, who cares about a list of names? Well. These are the names of every known tzaddik in the Tanakh, in the Mishnah, in the Gomorrah, in every big piece of literature that we know of, up until the days of Reb Nachman himself. And so it's said that when we pray in the merit of a tzaddik, it actually strengthens our prayers. And so if you need some prayer strengthening, this is very good for that. Uh, as, as you can see, there's a lot of books on prayer here. Let's see. Uh, Restore My Soul. I was trying to think of a Hebrew name for this. Um, it's something that uh, There's The Gentle Weapon, which is prayer. The, by the way, prayer is considered the very weapon of Mashiach, the weapon by which he will conquer the nations. Yeah, not through weapons of war, not through violence, but through prayer and through his words and through teaching. Uh, and Forest Fields is also about prayer. <laughs> um, Entering the Light is about prayer. The Inner Temple, oops, there we go. Looking at real life and then down at my phone, I can't keep it straight. The Inner Temple also, I uh, wouldn't say it's exclusively about prayer, but prayer is a very large uh, aspect of that. So let's try to straighten these out a little bit. And then Outpouring of the Soul is also another one about uh, if you struggle with depression or sadness, um, then this is something that's also very good to have with you. In fact, Outpouring of the Soul right here and Restore My Soul, both of these are related to <laughs> the empty chair, which we can kind of see. There we go, there's that empty chair. And the gentle weapon. These are kind of the um, universal, oops, the universalized versions of the much more, uh, you might say, Judeo-centric or Jewish-specific books. Um, these are meant for everybody, regardless of religion, and these are meant for specifically for people who are interested in Judaism. Um, World Mask by Rabbi Akiva Tatz is also pretty good. Um, let's see, let's zoom out. This is way too close. All right. Uh, Souls on Fire is phenomenal. If you don't want to get this, get, um, I think it's called Tales of the Hasidim by Martin Buber, which is very comparable to this book. I don't personally have that, uh, but I would like to soon. I know, Ray Luke, you have that. I know that you like that book. And for good reason, too, because it's said that the tales of the Hasidim, stories about the Hasidim and stories about the Tzaddikim and their disciples, their students, uh, are so inspirational it can actually help us and refine us morally. If you're a convert, this will probably be of interest to you. <laughs> I wouldn't say that that's necessary to have, but it was definitely an interesting read. There's my little sticky notepads. To be Hasidic, this is my first book on Hasidus. I highly, highly recommend this. Uh, this is actually a, a Chabad text, a Lubavitcher text. And again, as we remember, Chabad is associated with the Tanya, Lukatea Maraim, uh, which is different than Breslev, which is associated with, in this case, it's the Kitzer, or the shortened form of the Kutemaran.
uh, but both of them are, are phenomenal texts. But anyway, uh, this text right here, it's a bit pricey. You'll probably find it for about $40, uh, if I remember correctly. But it's really a phenomenal text. It will give you the very basics of Hasidus, and it will go fairly deep for what you uh, could otherwise find elsewhere. And for your interests. Here's another phenomenal intro. Sorry for all the wiggling here. <laughs> another phenomenal uh, entry level text, Every Man's Talmud by Rabbi Avram Cohen. And as it says, it is the major teachings of the rabbinic sages. It covers everything from law to the afterlife to teachings about angels to teachings about Gehinnom and to heaven. So this is phenomenal. Uh, it's a phenomenal book for learning about Jewish thought in general. I highly recommend this for uh, everybody, but especially for beginners. Um, Kabbalistic tradition, I don't recommend that for many people. Um, let's see. Strive for the truth is good for beginners. It's uh, it's on Musr, or uh, ethical refinement. Then we have stuff for the holidays. We have, oops, we have stuff falling is what we have. Uh, we have two commentaries of Sefer Yoyna. We have Pesach stuff. Actually, for when we were doing our uh, Passover crash course, uh, we were using these two volumes primarily, in addition to some halakhic texts, which we will be getting into. Let's see, we have a question. I'll have to scroll down. So, phones are so efficient, but also inefficient sometimes. All right, so we're getting a question. Could you type out these books in the comments? Um, possibly, but that'll take a while. <laughs> Just being honest, I, I'll try to maybe list some of them. All right. Oops, I have a, my carpet is... I have a carpet down here, and I tripped on it. Anyways, so here is part of the collection of Shas, otherwise known as the Gemurrah otherwise known as the Talmud, otherwise known as the Babylonian Talmud, otherwise known as... Ah, the Talmud! Ah. <laughs> uh, all right, here is my tiny little green Tanakh. I like laying on the couch and reading, so I thought, I'm going to get this, this little baby Tanakh so I can hold it in my hands and read it up in the air, and then I realized it was kind of heavy, so I didn't do that. But it's still... <laughs> Some of you guys are laughing at me, and it's well-deserved. This is the Stone Edition Tanakh, by the way. Again, sorry, it's so wiggly. That would be user error, rather than technical error. But anyways, this is the Stone Edition Tanakh. Um, the JPS Tanakh is okay. I know some people like it. Here, let's put it up here. Stabilize that. I know some people like the JPS Tanakh. I'm not personally much of a fan, although I have used it before. Um, the Stone Edition Tanakh, this one, I think is much better. I think the translation's better. It doesn't sound like the King James, which, I'm, again, I'm not really a fan of the King James, but the JPS Tanakh sounds very similar to the King James, almost <laughs> being identical with it verbatim for much of its reading. So... Uh, if you like the King James, the JPS might be good, but I also recommend getting this uh, just to compare the two. Those are good, two good versions. Now, I will say, the Pocket Edition, look how atomically small this is. This is so small, you can't even... Look, you can't even see the words, and it's because I'm moving. But <laughs> the words are very small for this one, so uh, if you'd like a a human-sized Bible. It's this uh, kind of brown, burgundy color uh, Tanakh right here. This is the complete Tanakh. Uh, it's much bigger, much easier to read. It has the exact same commentary from what I understand as uh, this green one. It's just almost twice as big. Now, this blue Chumash right here is the first five books of the Tanakh, um, Genesis through Deuteronomy. And this will have information for the Torah portions, the Haftar portions, 
and this is good for uh, synagogal use. Let's pull it out and just take a look at it, because why not? I'm also very much a fan of this one. That translation, again, is going to be the same because it's, yeah, it's the stone edition. So that's kind of the go-to version for Orthodox Jews and for Jews in general. So like I said, there's a lot of shots, although not the complete thing. They take up the whole bookshelf. <laughs> Okay, you guys are going to laugh at me. Uh, about 11 years ago, when I first started looking into Judaism, this was my tzitzis on a keychain. <laughs> totally homemade out of sewing thread, not even anything. So, the reason why I keep that is to remind me of my humble origins and not to be too hard on people, which I do anyways, but I shouldn't. All right, now let's get into some halachic stuff. As we can see there in the corner, a treasury of Sephardic laws and customs. Personally, you know, not being Sephardic, I don't use that very much. But um, it's still very interesting just for information purposes. And also, if you're Sephardic, that is a book that you'll probably want to get. In addition to... Let's see, I'm down on my knees now because I'm too tall, apparently. Uh, the Sephardic Kitzah Shulchan Aruch is, or the Sephardic Kitzah Shulchan Aruch is something that you will want to get. And then this is the Ashkenazi version of the Kitzah Shulchan Aruch. Uh, at least one volume of it. When I ordered it, they lost the first volume and then refunded me my money. So I only have one, uh, one volume of this, uh, which is very unfortunate, but I try to make do. This is the commentary by the Benish Chai on the Shulchan Aruch. Basically, he goes to the Shulchan Aruch, matches up the Halacha with the Torah portion, and he has lots of, of great insights. Now, the Benish Chai was a, a Mizrahi Chacham. Mizrahi, they wouldn't normally say rabbi, but Mizrahi rabbi, from uh, Baghdad. And while he's not very popular among Ashkenazim, he is popular among many Hasidim. So, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, although you're more than welcome to get it as well. There's no harm in that. Uh, it's just some Mishnah commentary. All right. Now, here's our next book that you will definitely want to get if you want to get stuff. <laughs> this is the which I assume you do if you're at this point in the video. Then this is the the kosher kitchen, a practical guide, as you can clearly oops, as you can now clearly read once I focus it and center it. So that is going to be probably your best resource on everything regarding kosher cooking, kosher dishes, koshering your dishes, things like this. It answers more questions than you could ever ask, probably. Until you become a great tzaddik and then you're writing the books. So, crossing the narrow halakhic bridge, that's more so just um, for people who will be poskening halakhic decisions, which is not going to be the average person. Um, this book by Manus Friedman. Doesn't anyone blush anymore? Well, apparently they do if they read the book. It's a good book. Uh, I wouldn't say it's foundational, but it's definitely a good one. Jewish Marriage by Rabbi Balka. Um, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're not married. I'd say it is a necessity if you're not married, and extraordinarily useful if you are married. So either way, I, do, I highly recommend it. Um, when I was in college, I wrote a paper on Ethiopian Jews, and that's what these are. This book is actually phenomenal. It is the first-hand account, oops, the first-hand account, there's Sharpie or something on here, from uh, an Ethiopian Jew who came over to Israel, I want to say in the late 70s, early 80s, like 81, 82, 
and it describes his journey through the Sudanese desert and then being airlifted to Israel. It's really a fascinating book. Um, let's see what else. Here's one of my stores. This is a Madrif, which, again, probably not going to be using. Um, here's one. I wouldn't say that this is absolutely necessary, but it's very good that this gives a list of the 613 Vince votes, and then a little synopsis of them. I think it was the positive mitzvot vote first and then the negative or vice versa. Uh, let's see. Now here is another Shalom Arish book right here. Garden of Education. Education with love. But this is actually <laughs> has nothing to do with romance. It has to do with raising your children in a loving environment. This is a phenomenal book. I highly recommend it. Um, this green one also, it's pretty short and pretty small, but, let's see, I really stumble walking. That is also a very phenomenal book. Again, Children in Halacha, by Rabbi Simcha Bonham Klein. It's also a very good and useful book because it brings up a lot of questions that I know that I had and probably that you've had too. Um, raising Kids to Love Being Jewish, that was a little bit of a disappointment, honestly. It wasn't bad by any means, it was just wasn't as meaty as I was hoping. Um, basically, if you're a secular Jew, this encourages you to be more observant and to raise your kids observant. Why Be Jewish? Again, I enjoyed it. It's by Rabbi Mir Kahana, which again, we all love, or should love anyway. <laughs> Here's another good book, especially if you are a convert or new to Judaism, A Concise Code of Jewish Law for Converts by Rabbi Michael Brady. Brady. Very good book. Um, Hulin Illuminated, probably not going to need. Divine Code is for Noahides. This is history, genealogy. Here's one that you might be interested in. The Jewish Way, Living the Holidays by Rabbi Irving Greenberg. Now, Rabbi Greenberg was what we might call liberal orthodox or conservadox, where he was very liberal, and not socially or politically, but uh, religiously, meaning that he was very lenient in regards to many things, but um, that's not always necessarily bad. Sometimes there is a place for that. Um, to, the, another book that I don't have on here is To Be a Jew by Rabbi Chaim Halevi Donan. It's one of uh, the primer texts for people who are interested in Judaism. I still have To Pray as a Jew. Let's see, there we go, there it is. And I gave away to be a Jew. I gave it to somebody, so apparently I don't have that. Um, from Speak is like a, a dictionary to teach you the right lingo so that you can get by in the synagogue, to teach you Yiddish and other fun stuff. Uh, Maimonides, that's just a history book on the Rambam. All right. This is Midrash for Benu Bachya, which is a fantastic Midrash. It gets a lot into the Midrashic and, <laughs> Midrashic and Kabbalistic interpretations of the Torah. So if you like that kind of stuff, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's beginner material, but uh, once you get into Judaism and you learn the basics, um, I think that it would probably be okay to, to start delving into that. Uh, Saror Hamar, uh, I like Rebbe Bahia better, that's all that I'm going to say. Uh, it's still a good commentary, though. Let's see, we also have 
the Meshek Chochmah, which is very good for beginners. It's a very good uh, beginner translation, or <laughs> very good beginner um, commentary, I should say. This is, let's see if we can even read it. This is Slichos, Nuzach Polen, I believe. That's what a lot of Hasidim like to use. It says Sephard, but it's it's Nuzach Polen. Anyway, Slichos are what we say during some of the holidays. And if you want more information on that, I can give you more information. That's my old Ashkenazi Sador right there, this brown one. This is the prayer book, which, as you can see, it's absolutely monstrously thick, but you don't say that every day, so that's good news. These, these blurry things, let's try to focus this. Can we focus? Maybe? I don't know. Okay, so these blue ones, these beautiful blue ones, all these books are beautiful, but blue is my favorite color. So. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> These are Maksarim. And what a Maksar is, is basically the holiday specific prayer book. So that's what those are. And that's my stash of blank paper <laughs> with pieces of wood. So let's see if I can get my old self up here. Um, oh, there's the cover to, <laughs> you can tell what I'm studying at the moment. Um, there's the cover to the Drash for Benubachia. And I'm wiping sweat off myself. I don't want to get all these books sweaty. <laughs> I don't have air conditioning, so I have the door open, which is why you can hear everything in the background. Here are some other books. Meditation in the Bible. I don't necessarily recommend that for beginners along with meditation and Kabbalah. Again, I don't necessarily recommend that for beginners. Uh, but once you get into it, once you're in Judaism for a little bit, then that's something that might be helpful. Um, this is another one. What would you do if you were not afraid? Or weren't afraid? This is a newer book. It's not a classical piece of rabbinic literature. But it's still very good. It presents uh, a good practical modern overview of... Hasidic thought by somebody who was not raised in it. So if you would like to introduce yourself to Hasidic thought, this one, there we go, this one along with To Be Hasidic by Rabbi Chaim Dolphin, both of these are very good. To Be Hasidic is more, uh, more formal of a book. This one, Micha Oshman, she was actually a former Facebook executive, <laughs> and I think she also worked, uh, let's see, what does this say? Head of Culture, TikTok, and Facebook. So she was a huge higher up in these massive companies, and then became religious later in life. So this is another great book. So, as we all know, Tisha B'Av is coming up, uh, not on Shabbos, because we're not going to be fasting on Shabbos. But it's postponed until the day after, so this year it is on Sunday. Let's see if we can, can see there's Hebrew letters on there. So this is the complete Tisha B'Av service. As you can tell, as you cannot tell apparently. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can, I really need a better camera or something. Or maybe I need to become a better cameraman. Anyways, it says Nuzach Sephard. So, the Nuzachim are basically the tradition of the prayer book that you use. All the prayers are basically going to be the same across every Nusach, uh, but sometimes, you know, this or that Nusach will include uh, a different poem, a different uh, piyut, you know, slightly different things, but they all include the fundamentals and the basics. So whichever one you use, you will be using the right one. Um, now, if you join a community, then you'll have to ask them which one you should use. But until then, that's that. So, these are, as we went over, these are the books for beginners, and I hope that this was beneficial.
Uh, have an easy fast, have a meaningful fast, even more than having an easy fast, have a meaningful fast uh, that's beneficial to you, and have a good Shabbos.